So from real life problems about Google and stuff, I'm going to present you some imaginary stuff <laughs> about cryptography. Uh, and essentially I'll be talking about how to compute on complex numbers using common multiplication schemes. So this paper was presented already and now I just want to share my knowledge with you. Uh, so this is joint work with uh, Carl, Walter uh, and Fred. And I will start, of course, with homomorphic encryption. This is the main subject of my studies. Uh, homomorphic encryption is a family of encryption schemes which allow computations on encrypted messages without decrypting them. So, for example, we can multiply to ciphertext, and as, as a result, we get the ciphertext which encrypts the product of underlying messages. The most efficient schemes uh, use the following polynomial rings to be defined. Uh, uh, these rings are of integer polynomials, modulo uh, some big integer q and some uh, two nth psychotomic polynomial, x to the n plus 1. And uh, almost all efficient schemes are based uh, on the decision ring of the wheel problem, where essentially you have uh, a pair of elements from this polynomial ring, two elements p and a. Uh, a is uniform the random element and B is a, a noisy product of element A with some secret S. So in order to make this element B noisy, we take some error from prescribed distribution over this polynomial ring. So in order to encrypt information, we essentially take our message, we as a polynomial as well, we add this message to the first component of a ring sample. And then we perform some computations using homomorphic operations, and in the end we remove uh, this uh, ring that we assemble from our separate text, but only partially. And uh, we get our message plus some noise introduced during homomorphic operations and encryption. And if this noise is small enough, then we can remove it as well. Uh, but in some cases, in some homomorphic encryption schemes, this noise uh, remains in the message. So typically, uh, in uh, HE schemes, uh, the following ciphertext space and plain text uh, spaces are used. So the plain text space is uh, almost the same as a ciphertext space, but here we have a smaller uh, integer modulus t, which is smaller than q. And all polynomials here, they considered, uh, all the coefficients of those polynomials are taken in the symmetric interval. So how to encode information essentially to this uh, space RT? Okay. For example, we have integers, then the very naive approach would be to encode this integer as a constant term of a polynomial. But uh, this encoding introduces some problems. Essentially, when you multiply things, this constant term will grow, and at some point it will wrap around modulo t. And in this case, you can't decode that. And, um, this is not really nice because t, this uh, parameter, is usually pretty small. It might be just a couple of thousand, so we can't perform a lot of computations. And another problem is, as you can notice, we don't use the plain text space properly. We just use one coefficient, but the rest remains zero. So how to overcome this issue and use the plain text space more efficiently? We can use the following approach, which is also applicable not only for, for integers, but also for uh, rational numbers and real numbers. Uh, we can first represent our number as, a, uh, for example, binary expansion, but it might be also ternary expansion at any base uh, you wish. And then we put integer part of this expansion to the least significant coefficients of our plain text, and uh, the fractional part to the most significant coefficients of of uh, plain text polynomial with negated signs. The signs are negated due to some mathematics there. Uh, so this method works better because now we have coefficients of our plain text smaller than before because we kind of smear the information across the coefficients. But now we have an additional problem that essentially these two parts, fractional and integer part, blue and green parts, they uh, can't juxtapose, otherwise we can't decode. So we need to keep track of those parts where they are. 
And almost a bit more than two years ago, uh, there was proposed another scheme, Han scheme, where complex numbers uh, can be decoded to homomorphic encryption. So they essentially use uh, fast Fourier transform to convert uh, vector complex numbers to some um, uh, to some psychotomic integer number, and then the psychotomic integer becomes a polynomial by really trivial uh, mapping. But the problem with that uh, encoding is that if you want to encode integers, you can't do that exactly. So you always have some approximation error. In the methods that I presented before, there is no such problem at all. So this is why I kind of I omit this third option in my reasoning. So as I showed you, there is a problem with the size of key for first two encodings, and we somehow need to kind of enhance our plain text space to perform computations on bigger data. So how to do that? Uh, last year. Uh, some researchers from Microsoft proposed to replace integer modulus t by some linear polynomial x minus b. In this case, the plain text space becomes isomorphic to integers modulo of very big number, b to the n plus 1. Why this number is big? Because b is at least 2, and n in practical applications is a couple of thousands. So you have really, really large space. And now if you want to encode integers, you essentially find first balanced b expansion of that integer and you substitute b by x and you get polynomial in this plain text space. So now you have uh, uh, essentially uh, a plain text with coefficients bounded by b over 2. But b again can be just number 2, so your coefficients might be just 0, 1, and minus 1. So to decode back, you just evaluate plain text in base B and get your integer. So essentially, as long as your integer uh, is not big enough, so as long as your integer uh, is not really huge, you can perform computations and decode correctly back. And also very nice thing that uh, when you do, when you use such encoding, you also decrease the noise, internal noise in messages. So that the uh, the noise growth uh, that appears during homomorphic operations in uh, in messages. So this idea can be generalized, and essentially our assumption was to take another polynomials and consider plain text spaces that we get. So the very naive choice was in the beginning to take x squared plus b. So in this case, we have that our plain text space will be isomorphic to a bunch of linear polynomials with also very big coefficients. And if we have that this number b also <coughs> square modulo b n over 2 plus 1, then we can send imaginary i uh, to the plain text space, to some polynomial. And in this way, we can encode uh, Gaussian integers, so complex numbers with uh, integer coefficients, uh, which are, of course, bounded by this number b n over 2 plus 1. So, which is already nice, because we can take a complex number and directly send it to the plain text space of each scheme. But we can go further, and we can consider uh, the plain text modulus x to the n plus b, and in this case, uh, our plain text space will be isomorphic to psychotomic integers. Uh, again, modulo p to n over n plus 1. So in order to encode such uh, psychotomic integer, we first send uh, roots of unity to, uh, to x multiplied by the alpha inverse, where alpha is a uh, nth root of uh, b, modulo b n over n plus 1. Then for resulting polynomials, we expand coefficients of that polynomial in base b. And since we know that b is equal to minus 6 to the m in the plain text space, we can substitute b by minus 6 to the m and get a uh, resulting polynomial with coefficients which are roughly bounded by b over 2. In order to make decoding, we uh, 
do the following three steps. We first do reduction module x to the n plus b, then send uh, x's to, to the rules of unity back, and then take representatives of resulting subatomic integers in the symmetric interval. So we have this pretty strict assumption about b, that b must be nth power of some number, modular b to n over n plus 1. But um, we can take b of this form, and essentially we have already a nice formula for alpha, uh, for the nth root of b in this case. If b, if you want to take b odd, then we have only this condition. Uh, and uh, which is pretty strict if M is big enough. And in general, actually, if you want to find really optimal B, because uh, the noise growth of our messages depends on B, and also the coding correctness depends on B, we need to factorize you know, last Raman numbers. This is why we kind of stick with the first uh, case, with the first choice of B. So, okay, now we have this super technical encoding from psychotomic integers uh, to the plain text space, uh, but the ultimate goal to encode complex numbers, just arbitrary complex numbers. So how to do that? In existing literature, there are two methods how to do that, essentially. So one of them is called fractional encoding, which was also uh, suggested by Microsoft people last year. <coughs> Essentially, you take your complex number, you approximate it to some uh, Gaussian rational. So essentially, you have some complex number with rational, imaginary, and real parts taken from prescribed set. And you convert these parts of uh, complex number to big integers. So resulting, it will result in some Gaussian integer with big coefficients, which you can then uh, map to the plane space. And the second method uh, was proposed by uh, Kostash Smart, meaning Nigel Smart and Vida, in 2017, where essentially they tried to solve uh, uh, two lattice problems, where they have a complex number as a point in the, in the space, and they have also psychotomic integers as a lattice. And you need to find like the closest point in that lattice for a given complex number. So a bit more details about fractional encoding. So first you define this set E of rational numbers. Uh, this set is defined in a way to kind of preserve correctness of encoding and decoding of these numbers to, uh, to integers, to big integers. Then you take your complex number approximated to uh, some Gaussian rationals where imaginary and real parts are taken from this set P. And then you uh, encode parts of your Gaussian rational to, uh, uh, to integers, to big integers modulo b to n over 2 plus 1. So how to do that? You essentially take uh, denominators of your rational numbers and put them, and put them uh, onto uh, the most significant bits of your uh, big integer. And in the least significant bits, you have your numerators of your rational numbers. So when you do decoding, you essentially put denominator from the most significant bits and uh, place it uh, in the needed space. Um, integer coefficient approximation works as follows. So first you need to define two parameters, C and T, which essentially uh, are responsible for the quality of your approximation, for the size of coefficients in your approximation to the complex number, and also how close is your approximation to, uh, to the given number. So first you compute numbers AIs and BIs, and you compose the following lattices. And you solve either a shortest vector problem in the first lattice, or you, you, you try to solve a closest vector problem uh, in a given lattice. So then using solutions to uh, one of those problems, uh, you can compose these psychotomic integers below, which uh, must approximate your given complex number. Okay, so now we have this chain of encoding. So we start with complex numbers, go to psychotomic mm -hmm. integers, then go to the plain text space, and now we need to encrypt those plain texts. How to do that? 
Uh, actually, if we have the FE scheme, so this is the description of Van der Kautren scheme, the only thing that we need to do is just to replace T by x to the n plus b. So, as before, maybe in the first line it's a bit tricky, uh, but actually mathematically it's exactly the same, so we just take the inverse of, uh, so in the region of it was uh, q multiplied by t inverse, modulo x to the n plus 1, but here we have q multiplied by x to the n plus b inverse, again modulo x to the n plus 1. But the rest we just substitute uh, t by x to the n plus b. So it defines the new scheme with the new plane text space. And then uh, if you want to estimate also the noise growth in the new scheme, we can take our estimation for the original FE scheme, these uh, huge formulas, and just substitute t by the um, one norm of x to the m plus b, which is b plus 1. And that's it. And you can immediately see that uh, since b is usually much smaller than t for uh, the same applications, so the noise growth in the new scheme with the new plane text space will be better than for FE. So to make some benchmarks uh, regarding our solution, we chose uh, regular circuits. Uh, regular circuits are circuits which consist of the following levels, consisting of uh, uh, A additional levels, and then followed by one multiplication. So our goal was to find how many such levels we can afford uh, using our solution and also others. So all the input that we took uh, at only 16 bits of fractional precision. So essentially after decimal point we have 16 bits uh, to preserve to maintain. So we did experiments uh, with four schemes. So the first one, which is uh, denoted by DO, it was the original FE scheme with integer approximation code, with the only method that we could apply uh, to encode complex numbers for the original FE. Uh, then we considered also uh, Microsoft approach with a linear uh, plain text modulus where integer and uh, where real and imaginary parts of complex numbers were encrypted separately because we could not do uh, this other way. Uh, in this case, uh, you use twice more memory because you, for one complex number, you have essentially two ciphertexts. And when you perform uh, multiplications, uh, using Karatsuba, you perform at least three multiplications to multiply to complex numbers in this case, and also uh, two addi three additions or something like this. Yeah. So a couple of additions. But in our case, which is uh, DI, where we have our new scheme, but we use integer approximation, and also another one, DF, where we use fractional encoding, uh, we have one separate text per uh, complex number. So as you can see, uh, we considered a data with uh, input bound by 2 to the 32 and 2 to the 64, which is pretty big and practical. And as you can see, the original fee scheme is really, uh, is really not usable uh, dealing with complex numbers at all. Uh, but uh, our scheme and also uh, the scheme of Microsoft people shows really nice results, so we can achieve that uh, 14, 13 which might be super practical. So graphically, uh, as you can see, the red line is the original read, which is really below uh, our solution and Microsoft solution. But remember that, yeah, there is, the Microsoft solution is a bit better than ours in some cases, but we use twice less memory and our operations are faster because we encrypt complex, uh, one complex number per socket text. So, okay, uh, to sum everything up, uh, we essentially proposed a new encoding method, constructed a new plain text space for this encoding method, constructed a new scheme, which also enjoys uh, slower noise growth, uh, and uh, our new scheme demonstrated that we can achieve almost the same depth at the state of the art in the field. But there are, of course, some drawbacks. So, the first one is really hard to find optimal B, this number B. 
because we have to solve, uh, we, have, we have to find uh, the factorization of very large generalized Fermat numbers. And uh, due to the same problem, we can't also pack information to one plane test. We, we can't uh, encode several data values into one uh, plane text. And there are also some open problems. So the first one is uh, that essentially we used approximation methods from psychotomic integers to complex numbers, uh, which are present in the cryptographic literature, but we don't know about other methods. Maybe there is something better there. And uh, it would be nice, of course, to uh, extend this idea of substituting integer by polynomial uh, for the separate text modulus. Uh, and uh, it would be interesting what kind of problem we uh, can get there. Yes, it was my last slide. Thank you for your attention. And I'm ready to address your questions. Say it again. Can you have, so have you only like figures for circuits when you do addition to after multiplication as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do you do additions also after multiplications. So this is just one level. So that's a for every between every two multiplications. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Actually, two a two a additions because you have you have a levels okay. of additions. Yeah. So for example, here uh, there is this line a which denotes number of additional levels that you have, either 0, 3, or 10. And you can see that yeah, even if we have 10 additions per, uh, 2 to the 10 additions per level, then we can achieve that 13, 12. Yeah, we can achieve 12, but other method can achieve 13. Sure. <laughs> Where, uh, sorry, I think you probably said, but where does the x to the n plus b polynomial come from? Uh, it's just very nice polynomial to uh, to have two nth roots of unity. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so can you, if you chose a different cyclotomic, would you get different conditions on alpha, mm -hmm. on the existence of alpha? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as you can see. So we have this uh, nice map here, just because we have this polynomial squared plus b. But of course we can take another polynomial. Uh, but you know that uh, it should contain nth root of unity. And since all the dimensions in homomorphic encryption schemes are powers of 2, m should be also a power of 2. So this is why, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, all suitable polynomials here, they will be of that form. Any more questions? No? Yeah, thank you.